So I've been calling you, is it Thalia or Talia? Talia. Talia? Yeah. Oh, completely wrong. <laughs> no, I was right, just an accent. <laughs> Thalia, Talia. Okay. No, I'm going to forget that by next week. Talia. Okay. So where's it from? So Talia is in uh, ancient Greece, is a goddess of entertainment. And I've always been, you know, fascinated. Oh, so it's not your real name? Then. No, my name is Nicole. Uh, okay. My surname is a very difficult um, Italian surname, <laughs> which at some point, you know, I had to change because I was like, this is too long. So when you first um, went on your journey as a, as a singer, did you actually use your, your government name? Yes, I've used that until 2018, which is where basically I, started, I released the first song. And I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. So <laughs> Were well, a lot of people struggling with it? Yeah, because they just can't pronounce it. So, <laughs> okay, you know, what, what is it? It's called, it's Di Joachino. Which is not difficult to pronounce, no, it, it, but it is a little bit. Yeah, but then if you read it, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, so did you, cause you, yeah, exactly. Because you see, you said it, DJ Aquino. Yes. DJ, yes. DJ Aquino. Yeah, there you go. So you're, you're bilingual. Yeah, there. there you go. You, can I tell, give you an interesting fact about me? When I was young, I was so boring and, and like nerdy. Well, actually, I wasn't nerdy, but I was a little bit. That, <laughs> like during playtime at primary school, on a Thursday, I think it was, rather than go and play football in the playground with all my school kids, there was a little porter cabin outside the playground yeah. where we used to learn Italian. Oh, so when I was about, when I was, uh, but I stopped when I was about 11 before I went to second Oh, so you don't remember I much. Remember <laughs> I remember a few numbers, that's about it. Yeah. But I was sitting in this porter cabin during the break time. Oh, that's playground. interesting. Um, it's not really, is it? Is it? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Anyway, a little fun fact. But okay, so you've been singing for how long? Well, basically my whole life. I started when I was four. So that's okay. all I've ever done. And okay. then, yeah, professionally around 12, 13 when I was in Italy. Mm -hmm. And then 2012, I came here in okay. the UK. And yeah, I started doing what I do now. So you moved here with your family? No, I moved in on my own. Really? Yeah. And how old were you? I was almost 20. When you moved? Oh, okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, why did you decide to move to London? Just music. Um, in Italy, music is not considered a job, really. Like, people don't really take it as seriously. So I knew that. Oh, and also, there's, like, a ceiling. So people don't really uh, appreciate R&B, gospel. Really? Um, yeah, so it's unless you do melodic, you know, typical Italian music, yeah. they don't. They want to know. If you're Italian, they don't like you singing in English, so, which is really weird. So, yeah. So I was always, I was always fascinated what, you know, I could do once... So you could speak English when you were in Italy, could you? Yes, not obviously, not as now, yeah, okay. the same as now, okay. but yes. You were learning in school, effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what is the music like out there? So do you, obviously, so people would associate Pavarotti style, like, <laughs> and all the rest of yeah. it, like, with um, Italian music. But is there, like, R, is, is there a R&B um, uh like seen up there do you have like Beyonce music do you have like no like no we don't really have R&B like everything that's basically not even Beyonce oh uh, yeah no we do no we do have foreign artists yeah. so we do listen to them but, no, but no one who does them like we don't do no one no artist actually wakes up and is like oh, I want to do R&B because Italian doesn't sound nice right, you know yeah. on, on those okay, and it's fair. not you know it's not typical Italians yeah. are very traditional they like yeah. their own stuff new things yeah. now we're getting close to hip hop yeah. but it's a struggle so, so Italian hip hop yeah, we do. That must be and very good. Yeah, it's basically like third after France, like yeah. French pop. Yeah. Wicked. It's really good. <laughs> so, Alden, would you incorporate any of that in your future music? I thought about it. And to be fair, I would like to do it because, you know, it's a part of me. But I think, I think it's quite difficult. But, you know, I think I'll probably pull it off at some point. Okay. So, you came over to the UK because you wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So, if, if there's not really much of a, an R&B scene out there and it's kind of not frowned upon, but it's not really the, the in thing, let's say. Um, how did you become so fascinated with it and just enjoy it so much? Well, it's interesting because I start, when I started singing, I was doing opera music. So I was so far from it, right? Yeah. And then around 12, 13, um, my parents had a conversation with my teachers at the time. And they were like, well, she's amazing. So we wanted to continue. But then when they came home, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to listen to... I was listening to Alicia Keys, like, you know, secretly. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, this is what I feel like I need to do. But it's interesting because I'd never... Like, in my family, no one is musical like they do they're not terrible but no one sings or plays when you say they're not terrible are they kind of but you just don't well no 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 is it like my mum and dad are actually yeah. on tune it's my sister is like no this is a different <laughs> part of the family but yeah. no my mum and dad sing on tune yeah. but um no one plays or has that much interest in music so it's always okay. been something that was in me and then I started being interested in like gospel music and yeah when I moved here basically I started working in the industry mm -hmm. which was very interesting so when you came over I'm assuming you came over on your own mm. and you didn't know that many people over here if anybody at all I didn't know anyone I came with my mum oh your mum came <laughs> yeah my mum helped me for like a month to you know settle down yeah. find a job and, yeah. and a house and then she left and I was on my own yeah what was your first job 
Um, I was working as a receptionist for a hotel because I've done um, a language school in Italy, a high school. So I was studying different languages and also was like tourism as well. So, yeah. So I was like, I need to do something until, you know, I find my first gigs, which last for like three months. And then I had to leave because that job was like 55 hours a week, which was mad. (laughs) And I didn't have time to do music. So after that, then I moved on part time doing um, hostess in a restaurant in okay. central london yeah. and i've stayed there basically until 2015 and then slowly you know just get less and less days <laughs> what was it like um trying to find uh, where the music scene was in london because it's quite a, like it, it doesn't seem a big place to anyone who lives here but i'd imagine for someone coming from italy whereabouts in italy were you coming from rome from rome so yeah. the capital so we're coming from rome i'd imagine does it does it seem like a, a massive place um you don't know no anyone? It doesn't. It no? D- no, but I've always been used to travel, so that's what that's what one thing that people I think people think. Oh my gosh, you've travelled! It must have been so crazy. I don't feel like I've done such a crazy thing. Like I've just yeah. like oh, I moved, but I've seen <laughs> yeah. London many yeah. times before moved, so I already knew. You know, most things. Obviously, I didn't know the ends and stuff, but yeah. I didn't. I knew the centre. I, I yeah. knew how to move around. I knew yeah. the train and all that. Yeah. Um, oh, so when you say you've seen London, you actually been to London. Yeah, yeah I've been to London like two or three times before okay, that, so and so yeah, it wasn't terrible, but. In terms of music, mm-hmm. um, I already came. So when I decided to come here, mm-hmm. um, that was August 2012, and I've fl- flown in in uh, November. But yeah. when it was August, basically, I was watching the Olympic Games, which was 2012, you know, at the time. Yeah. Um, and on TV, I saw a choir singing with George Michael um, at the ceremony at the end. Okay, yeah. uh, George Michael, the the was like the was a different act. So Dermot, take that, and someone else as well, Muse. And I was like, I want, I would like to do something like that. So I yeah. waited for the credits and I found a name, which were Urban Voices Collective. Wow, okay. And I was like, okay, cool. So I've emailed them, but no one answered to me. And I was like, okay, they don't want me. You know, I get to London, still no one answers. Yeah. Randomly, January 2013, which was six months later, I get this email saying, oh, sorry, we didn't get back to you, but we just were an addition at the time. We want you now. Wow. So in March of auditioned yeah. and I've joined the choir straight away, which was only six months after I was here. Yeah. And then from that, really, like my first gig was the Royal Variety performance. Really? Yeah. So in London. So, you know, like, so I was already kind of like, it wasn't that difficult, but it's because I went for it. Like I knew already what I wanted to do. So anyone out there, just go for it. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So how, so you've not really looked back since then. So I'm I'm assuming, so once you're in that sort of company, you're Mm -hmm. around other singers that have got um, access to different places and different people. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly how it happened. So many doors for you. Yeah, it was, it was obviously for the first, I would say two, three years, obviously I I was, you know, trying to get an idea of how this worked because I had to completely relearn a new industry. Mm Um, so I was trying to understand also if I wanted to be an artist as well like yeah. I just you know I love performing so yeah. to me I was like I'm doing amazing things I don't want you know I went on tour with Diversity and I had a, an amazing time with Ashley Benjo and he was like he kind of became like a mentor for me during those six weeks because yeah. uh, that was the end of 2015 and he was like you need to go for it and I actually took the leap and left my first um, job and, you know, being full-time, I just being full-time with music. So when you came over, did you have like aspirations of being a solo artist or did you just want to be involved in music that wasn't necessarily opera? Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to be involved because to be fair, after 12, I've stopped doing opera completely. So I just went into, I had a jazz degree. I was wow. in a first gospel choir. I had like three, four rock bands. So I was doing the most. Rock bands? Yeah, yeah. I was, like, <laughs> I was doing metal for like the four years. What, yeah. In Italy? yeah. Yeah, there's a massive underground scene there. That's crazy. Yeah, crazy. and yeah, I was literally traveling all over the place because I just love music so much. How I just want to. Your voice fit into that crazy heavy metal scene. Well, because if you're an opera singer, actually, metal metal is easy. Really? It's very yeah, it's very interchangeable. So it, it's actually the easy, the easiest thing for opera singers is to sing on rock, rock and metal and progressive metal stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so you came over here uh, wanting to be a singer. Mm-hmm. Got involved in the opera with the opera, uh, was singing with the opera. So, how, how was the transition? So, that how long were you with the opera? Are you still with the opera, by the way? Sorry. No, really, I'm not doing like I can, I can obviously because that's my training. But uh, so sometimes when there's classical jobs, you know, come through, I'll obviously still do it happily because it, I miss that part as well. <laughs> but um, no, I mainly do. I mainly work in the gospel industry right now. So, okay. yeah. Um, so you do. Well, you've got your new EP that we're going to touch on. In, in yeah. A so the. The transition from you being part of the opera to you being Nicole 
Talia. Talia. I'm more tempted to say Thalia. Talia. It's just Thalia, but with a different accent. I know, but no, but I'm saying Thalia, which is completely yeah. Different anyway. Nah. All right. So, Nicole, Talia. <laughs> yes. Um, you transitioning from that person that's part of the choir mm-hmm. to your own entity as an yeah. artist. Um, what was that like? How did you go about that? Um, I was just really, I was just trying to find a sound that was completely mine because there was, there was a point, I think there's a point that every artist hits where you're like, I don't, I want to have longevity. I don't want to just, you know, sing and, and just sing like everyone else and sing the tunes that everyone hears, which, you know, you enjoy momentarily, but you don't know how long they're last. Um, so I was always, everyone was like, but you should do this, but you should do that. And then I think the year of 2018 was pivotal for me because I basically, I sang at the royal wedding of uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I wasn't prepared for that. Okay, there it is. There's my bomb. <laughs> you did, how did that happen? Oh, because part of the choir. Well, no, I wasn't yet. Okay. I wasn't. It was basically uh, my very good friend, uh, Bim Amuako, who got called from by the royal household. Uh-huh. And she got asked by Prince Charles to um, organize this choir for the royal wedding. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was one of the first people she called. Okay. So it was seven of us in the beginning. And then um, she still had to find 23 people. Um, and then, you know, Karen Gibson got involved, which is a director of Kingdom Choir. Okay. She broke the other 23. Yep. We got all together. And now some of us joined, ended up joining the choir, which is... I who I continue to work for the last two years, basically. What was that like? Uh, crazy. <laughs> did, you, did you get to meet any of the royals? Oh, yeah. Basically everyone, other than the queen, like physically, the, the queen is the only person that we haven't seen because obviously it's the last one to get in the church. Okay. Um, but yeah, we saw everyone else really. I think I only, I didn't see actually William, Prince William, but I saw um, Kate. Okay. Well, so, you say saw, were you at the back no, no, the she was. Oh, no, no, she was like she she passed in front of us to thank us for what we're doing. So she was like, five, well, no, they can't. They don't really. She's she's very, but she's yeah, she's very nice. <laughs> so did you go to like the after party? We didn't because we were only there for the church, and then we you left. Didn't get invited to the after party. Well, the after party wasn't like it. It was you only get to sing. You know, it's it's Ooh. a very it's a very how do you say like obviously regal but very Snobbish. strict. Oh, but it's very strict. Like, there's only, you know, everything is timed. Everything is very, you know, yeah. security was at all-time high. Yeah. I couldn't speak to my mum until, like, I, f- I finished singing at, like, 12.55. And I couldn't speak to her until 4. Like, phones were completely off for everyone. Yeah. Were phones off or were they taken away? No, no, no. I, well, we could, obviously, we couldn't take them in the chapel with us. Okay. But, um, no, we had them on. It's just that they completely cut off all signals. So we yeah. could, yeah, so no one could have conversations. Oh, mate. Yeah. Serious, <laughs> Boom. Guys. Were you allowed to tell anyone in advance? No. So how how long did you have to keep that a secret for? Four months. Four months. It was it was mad because I remember my friends or like people that are asking me for work and they were like, Oh, May, yeah. around May nineteenth. I was like, mm, we can't and obviously it was like three or four of my good friends and we worked together yeah. and we were all trying to hide it, but it was it was crazy. It was very difficult. I even told my mum, I was like, Mum, you can't tell anybody because uh... we signed an NDA. And my mom obviously, my mom is in it. She's in Italy. But when I got back, I got back for like a week, and I got to uh, to the hairdressers, and literally every single person in our hairdressers was like, "Oh my gosh, Nicole was, was like, I mean? mom." <laughs> I was like, "You can't say." It. I was like, "It's fine. We're in Italy." I was like, "No, but you can't say it. Like we're breaking the law." <laughs> okay, but it all worked out well. Oh, absolutely, it was yeah. A great day. Yeah. Did you get amazing. Fed well? Watered well. Uh, yeah, we did. We did have. We had food. Yeah, we had food. Did it give you like little rubbish, little sandwiches, or did it give you like proper food? No, we got. We had sandwiches, obviously. <laughs> obviously, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know, because they got they got a little bit of money, like. I know that's what you know, but it, obviously we were there. We were actually there so such a short time. We were. Oh, really? We only had twenty five minutes to get ready. It was. Oh, cra- I would assume it would be like you'd be there for ages. And be waiting um, and waiting and we waiting. were supposed to, but um, we had police escorting us from um, Buckingham Palace there, which was crazy as well I got videos of that and every time I watch it it's crazy because obviously you got we couldn't find traffic obviously like they want us to go s- smoothly um, so it was easy to get there but someone basically took us through the route that everyone was taking so we were doing security like everyone else and we was like we wasted like 45 minutes just doing that so we got there literally had to do my makeup and hair and get ready get dressed in, for, in 25 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was a lot <laughs> No, it turned out absolutely. It's the best thing we've ever done so far. Yeah. Yeah. Did they put you up in a nice hotel? Last question about the wedding. Oh, no, because we went straight back to London. It was literally the four hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was four hours straight back to London. And then two days later, we had um, Prince Charles' birthday party as well. 
So what, it was. So you done you something like that as well? Yeah. What? <laughs> so basically, you're just your 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 mates. They're, the they're my mates, yeah. yeah. And I sang for Prince Ar- uh, Prince um, Archie as well. Boom. <laughs> when he was born. I don't, I don't even know who Archie is. Which one's that? Is that Williams? No, it's um Harry's Harry's son. Harry's son. So Harry. O- Princess o- Harry's son. Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan, yeah, had a Archie, baby Archie. Yeah, they had a baby literally, it was like last year, yeah. Oh, last year around a baby? May. Yes. Oh, I yes. <laughs> I really don't care yes, around May, they had a baby and yeah, sang the lullaby when the morning he was born. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have, is this on your, this is not on your Instagram? Yeah, everything is there. Is it? Because if it's not on Instagram, it doesn't exist. Oh, I swear, it's there. Yeah? Do you, you think I'm doing something like that and not posting okay, it? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Trust me. So you've done that stuff. So you got that backstory. That's amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, but then you transitioned. Then you know you, you wanted to be your own person. You yeah. Your own star, your own artist. You talk. You spoke about finding your sound. Mm. How did you go about that? Like, what was the what was the process in finding your own sound? Um, I think my key was just finding the right producer. Like that was it. Because for years, as I was saying earlier, people were like, "Oh, but you should do your own stuff. Your voice like that. You can't waste it." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, but I can't. I'm so." I'm such a perfectionist, but also I'm so specific about how one thinks to sound. Um, And I just want someone who is in the same wave as me. And not only um, like technically, but also working like work wise ethic. Mm -hmm. I need to have someone like that understands me. There's no sleep time if we're doing an EP. Mm -hmm. And I found and it was so crazy because the way it happened is my my best friend's husband. Mm -hmm. And we I didn't even know he was producing like that. Okay. And now one day she was doing my hair and I was like, Who's that? What's that thing in the room? It's, yeah. it's like, Oh, it's, he's playing Lyndon is playing. I was like, That's that's what he produces and I didn't know. Yeah. Man. So that was yeah, last year summertime. And um I did a couple of singles before that, but I was still like one they don't they're not really cohesive. They don't really sound the same. The other singles that you released, were they in the other name? Yeah. No, no, it was still Nicole Talia because that's right. literally the year I've, I've changed it. Okay. So there was one twenty eighteen, which is Expectations, which was my first single. Okay. And then last year in 2019, I've um, released uh, just before the Royal Wedding, there was a single called Take Me Away. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was produced by Elevens, which is a duo of producers. And that's also online. But that's more like um, ambient R&B, okay. which is a slight, I like it, but it was far from what I really wanted. Um, Indian R&B. No, it was uh, ambient. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Indian okay, Arabic. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, yeah, so it's ambient. It was more like yeah. chilled kind of right, vibe, which yeah. to be fair, I do still, I do like chilled things as well, but that was quite different from what I wanted. And then, yeah, I just literally told my um, my producer, I was like, I like this artist. I like this artist, but I also want to put together R&B and gospel, okay. which is how I sing. So mm-hmm. find some something that, you know, and, we just literally clicked so easily. Mm-hmm. And first song that we ever wrote together was Don't Mean to Say, which is the first song of the EP. Okay. Um, and yeah, we worked th- together for the whole year. And the last song they wrote together was Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And yeah, last song, song we recorded and then we're like, boom, this has to be in it. So did and you, do, you do the whole EP? Yeah. Yeah, he oh. produced the whole thing. What's his name? Uh, LGK. LGK. Yeah, Lyndon James. All right. With that being said, let's play a track from the EP. So um, before we do that, actually, mm-hmm. we um, started off the interview by playing 1992. Yeah. What is that about? Um, 1992 is the year I was born. Mm-hmm. And the song is about being awkward by being confident in yourself. Like I'm, I'm a very introvert person, and I don't like you know. My whole life, people have been told, have been telling me, "Oh, you have to be louder. If if you want, you know, if you if you want to be seen, you have to do this. You have to do that." Which I've I've always made a statement by being who I am, and I want to encourage people yeah. in do this, doing the same because it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, that's what it is. Do you ever about. investigate that? So um, I've, I've had to do these things, and apparently you can get the letters and I N J R and all this. Have you ever for what? Sorry, for being an introvert. An oh, introvert, and I can't remember what it's, it's called when you when you when you search, research the type of person that you are. Oh really? No, I never did. Okay, oh, I'll find out for you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So you, I would do it. And, and so I had to do one. Oh, okay. And it, it, it was actually what well, I'm a. Oh, I can't remember what I am now, but I'm a type of introvert, but like a. Not an introvert, introvert, but kind of like an outgoing introvert. You could be, yeah, you could, that's ambivert. You could be both. So when you're comfortable, you're ex- extrovert, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm the same. When I'm with my friends, I'm I'm, I'm very comfortable and you can hear me loudly as well. But when I'm just by myself or like I'm someone I don't know, mm. it's very like, I'm silent. And these are the, you know, the people are like, oh, but why are you quiet? I'm like, I don't know you. I don't know. <laughs> I've got nothing to tell you. But, you know, but then 
music also pushed me because at some point I had to decide as like, are you do you want it more than how you want to be shy? Like you know, okay. so sometimes I just need to come out of myself and just not be Nicole for a minute. <laughs> It really sounds like you're having a battle with who can hit the highest notes. <laughs> Nicole Talia. Is that right? Yes. Hey, I got it now. Nicole go. Talia featuring Joel Fender. That track's called This Is Right. Taking from the EP, which is called Apocalypse. And when did the Apocalypse come out? Friday, 27th of November. What made you decide to um, release an EP? Um, I just felt like I just needed to have a full body of work to just be able to present and just be like, this is me. This really? is what I do. Yeah. Cause, cause, so we, I always have this debate with people. people. Some people say, you know what? I wanted to have a body of work and put that out. Some people say, you know what? Actually, just do singles and just drip feed the singles. Yeah, I think it's just an, it's just um, what you prefer doing. Because mm -hmm. I don't think right now, like it's not imperative to have an EP, I think. As mm -hmm. long as you have good singles good and they're all cohesive. You know, they're still, they're your sound, they represent who you are. Yep. I don't think it's a rule that, you know, people don't have to do an EP, but I just feel like for me, it was important because I had a lot, of, a lot of tracks that, to be fair, all the songs that I have on um, Apocalypse are all singles. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, they could also all be, because that's why I like, I like them all because they're like, there's, there's not a song that I can say, oh, I can leave it there. Yeah, like, it's not a filler. It's nah, like, yeah. 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 So all the songs that I was actually planning this year, the plan originally was to drop every month. Because I, okay. I had enough material. But then okay. I was like, actually, no, let me drop every two months or so. Okay. And then also, when we have everything finalized, mm -hmm. we give them three extra tracks that they never heard. And that's how, that's how it happened. Okay. All right. Yeah. Visuals. Yeah, visuals. So I took, so the pictures, I had a photo shoot mm -hmm. and everything else I've done myself. So everything you see there, videos and all that graphics everything so everything that you drop are, are we gonna get like videos for everything uh, oh for for videos music yeah. videos um I'm, I'm planning to film but yeah. I, I don't have a date yet okay yeah cool. all right um i'm assuming you write all your own music yeah i do okay and what is the process like because you know you've, you've released your own body of work mm -hmm. there's a little bit of pressure that comes with that um yeah. not only in releasing it but then getting it done in time then getting it done to your own satisfaction i imagine yeah. you keep going back and say no i don't like this bit oh, actually i don't like yeah. it and all that and then you're going to release it to the masses mm -hmm. to the universe yeah. <laughs> for them to receive it yes and effectively judge you mm -hmm. how was that how did that feel i just feel like so when I hear other people, or when I used to hear other people just releasing their stuff, um, I was always like, oh my gosh, it must be so difficult. It must be, it must be. For me and for my producer, it was, I don't feel like it was that hard because we have such a good connection. And every time we have a session, we finish a song. Yeah. So we have, we end up having, I don't know, in a month, we end up having like four to five songs nearly finished. And yeah. the thing is, we're so particular, both of us, about... Mm -hmm making sure that even if it's a demo it still sounds great yeah that basically when you go and look at it, all you need to do is mix it yeah okay. so we had ended up having some really good tracks like things like apocalypse itself we recorded it in like three hours and when it's me him and his wife which is my mm. best friend and she helped me you know um why writing. is she involved what does she do she she's a singer as well oh, steph, okay. steph notice yeah she sings okay. with me in the kingdom choir um we've been singing together for for a few years now and she also co-wrote some of the like choruses and little things and you know just help me out to you know when you're stuck and she was like oh you could do this yeah and she did some of the bvs with me oh so really she just wants some credits that's all oh no no she didn't she didn't even know i was gonna credit her she was like why are you crediting me i was like of course i am yeah, that was just, oh, oh. Yeah, all <laughs> right. no, no, yeah, no, no. i want to uh okay so the, it's been released now and yeah. how, how has the uh, been, how, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> how has it been received um, very well, actually. I, yeah. I was really, this was the first time that I was actually very nervous. Obviously, the feeling is always the same, like your stumble tickles, mm. or like before mm. you're, especially when you see like midnight, when you mm -hmm. go and look for yeah. your song, you're like, yeah. oh, it's actually out. Yeah. Uh, but this time I was extra nervous because obviously an EP is a bigger deal than just yeah. a single. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to make sure. But I also, at the same time, I was making sure that, you know, I was speaking to my producer the whole week and he was feeling the same. I'm, until one day, I think the day before, we were all like, but there's no reason to be nervous. It sounds sick. Like, why do we have to be nervous? Jeez. And the yeah, we just like, yeah, I mean, you know, you have, I think you have to gas yourself. Otherwise, yeah, you know, yeah. the Who else will? Exactly. So we're just like, yeah, let's talk. There's no point being nervous. It sounds great. We worked so hard on it. And yeah, so, you know, at the end of the day, we just managed to, to do some, something great throughout our pandemic, which is yeah. mad. So <laughs> it's a really good EP. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, So a lot of people that listen to this show are, artists such as mm -hmm. yourself like independent um 
unsigned and all the rest of yeah. it. Uh, how do you go about marketing yourself and promoting your EP, for example? Like, how do you make sure that you release an amazing EP mm-hmm. that doesn't fall on deaf ears? Mm. Well, that's a, that's a hard one because I feel like a lot of people, I mean, that's what sh- everyone should do, to be fair. I think it's, you know, having some help from PR. Um, but that's very expensive. So mm-hmm. this time I had to skip and I was literally like, I know that I can do a lot, a lot of work. If Obviously, I need to do three times mm-hmm. the things that someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. So I need to study more. I need to, you know, research more. I need yep. to contact more. But that's where my skills of networking you know mm-hmm. come come through which it was like yeah i have to do it myself i have to find find a way and that's how i did it so i just research 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 and contact whoever you think is useful for you know and what's it been like because i can imagine a lot of people because i have this conversation again mm-hmm. with a lot of people that, uh, when they're trying to do this and there's either people don't like you or people don't get back to them people yeah. just ignore them like have you had most times you get ignored <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, I think normally there's like a process of about two, three hundred emails mm-hmm. um, before, mm-hmm. obviously before it drops. Yeah, a lot of radios actually are very good at answering. Yeah. Um. So most radios, to be fair, that I've actually had a contact and I sent my stuff to, they were like, "Oh yeah, cool." If then if not, they don't answer. Is mm-hmm. I never had anyone say no, we don't like it, or no, it's not for us, or it's just too good, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. To be fair, no, they don't answer. That's the yeah. thing. Uh, no one says yeah. no. Oh, they just, just don't, don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying it's not like because yeah. I'm too good mm-hmm. but I never had anyone saying no actually oh, to be fair if they get back to me saying this is not for us I get yeah. it because yeah. you know sometimes it's just not for you so Facts. it's good yeah. okay yeah. alright so what's next for you so I am just seeing so I'm taking December as you know mentally for holiday because mm-hmm. this year has been a lot and obviously you know being a creative has been very stressful always mm-hmm. trying to find ways of you know staying afloat and making it work yeah. so for now I'm just going to refresh but I literally mm-hmm. have like 10 songs that I want to finish already. So okay. next year, January, we'll go back in the studio. If not before Christmas, just like to have a session in just to, you know, to settle things. But Is there anything that you wanted to do in 2020 that you couldn't because of this scandem- scandemic? Yeah, a, a release party. <laughs> I was oh, really upset. You really want to have a release party? Yeah, everyone had it. Why not me? Oh. <laughs> so are you going to postpone it? Are you still going to have one? Or well, I hope gonna... so. But then I'm, I'm not sure when we're going to be able to. So I'm thinking, is May 2021? Why not a Zoom party? You could just be there I've on your done. own in your living room. Well, I've done one with my closest friends on Friday. So it was nice. But, oh, you know, Zoom doing parties. it... No. Um, if they're your friends though it's alright yeah, yeah yeah no, my, I know yeah. Zoom parties are not that's why I'm like I, I, I've counted and also I've done like a little quiz which was really funny because people started like you know hating on each other oh is that when you were on Instagram like, uh, Instagram? oh no because I saw something on Instagram and you're asking people where oh you yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah but okay. I imagined because I wanted to try my friends right and yeah. they were like I was like these questions I've posted them already publicly so yeah. if you don't know them now yeah. you should be ashamed of yourself yeah. Yeah. and they still got them wrong yeah. some of them and some people I was like sorry you're not my, you're not my real friend yeah. <laughs> Follow them, delete them. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that, not oh, that well, deep. Still got time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see what happens with the promotion. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, 2021. What's yes. the plan there? So, you got a few more releases. You mm-hmm. said, yeah. Um, another body of work, or are you just going to drip feed releases? Ah, uh, that, that's going to be. I'm, I'm a very like. I go with my gut. So I see what I'm going to feel and see how good mm. the song. So sometimes I'm like, I, I'm so impatient and I'm like, this song is so good and I just want to release it. But I want to play a bit more, a bit smarter this year. Yeah. Um. I want to. I want to see, like. I'm praying for a good management now. Mm-hmm. I would like to have... Now I, I feel like I just need the help because mm-hmm. I realised on Thursday, which was the day before the release, and I had I was literally filming a whole day for another project mm-hmm. and I wasn't able to be on my phone, which was mm-hmm. very frustrating because I was like, I'm supposed to prom- promote, it, promote yeah. right now, yeah. but I can't. So yeah. that's why I realised that when you need a full team to yeah. do things for it's you true. at that point. 100%. So I would like to you know, work on building a team, a solid team of... It doesn't have to be like 20 people, just people you know who are reliable and, and I can can count on mm-hmm. and people that can get me where i need to be yeah and i just sometimes i just don't know how to open that door you know what i mean is there anything that you have got in your mind that you definitely want to get done mm-hmm. in 2021 hear the, yeah hear the bars there if you need a rapper yeah okay. <laughs> you get it done in 2021 <laughs> that was my bomb hold on a minute Missed it. Let's see, let's see. There you go. Oh, there you go <laughs> i actually missed it twice Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> i didn't deserve it obviously <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I just I feel like so I've got a couple of tracks where I needed a gospel choir and obviously this year I couldn't do it mm-hmm. um, I have a song that I wrote when Kobe Bryant passed at mm-hmm. the beginning of the year and it's about dads and, and dads and daughters bond and yeah. I have a really good one with my dad so I wanted yeah. to do one but obviously it was first lockdown and I couldn't and yeah. then restrictions of six people yeah. and the second one so I would like to drop that next year 
and um, I would definitely like to record a live video uh, of Apocalypse because I full band like full like gospel style. Nice. Yeah. So that's going to be it's going to be a, a big one. So it's a, it's a big production, but. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, hoping if the funds come in, then mm. it's all good. And you're going to be performing Apocalypse for us today. Yes, okay. I am. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap this up by asking you to let people know your social media. Mm -hmm. um, let people know what you, where yes, they can catch you. Yes, my Instagram is Nicole Talia Music. Um, yeah, not Twitter. Thalia. Talia. So it's T-H-A-L-I-A -A mm -hmm. uh, Music. And Twitter is It's Nicole Talia. Mm -hmm. And um, on Facebook, I'm also on snapchat uh well tiktok everywhere really. everywhere bloody yeah, hell. yeah okay, cool. everywhere <laughs>